discretion is strongly advised, and it is recommended that those who are prone to seizures, discomfort, or anxiety triggered by such stimuli refrain from watching. Your well-being is our priority, and we urge you to approach this content with caution. Watch at your own risk, and remember to take breaks if needed. Thank you for your understanding. Grip. When the 
curse the curse. The lighthouse light halts its rotation, directing a beam towards the trapped individual and resulting in their immediate demise. itself is a site of extreme danger, yet one person known only as James has explored its depths and lived to tell the tale. His presence is a mystery. No records or documentation reveal his origins, his intentions, or how he entered this reality. James has interacted with numerous objects within the lighthouse, potentially becoming hazardous himself. Consequently, he remains in quarantine under observation until we can fully comprehend his story and the risk he may pose. And our efforts, we can only wait, watch, and hope to unravel the enigma of James and the foreboding lighthouse of level 97. Until then, the danger remains ever present.
I've been listening to that transmission for so long that it's eerie deep and haunts the background of my thoughts. There's something more to uncover here. I'm not entirely sure how I convinced Andrew to let me set up an outpost on this godforsaken island, but somehow he entrusted me. Ever since I first heard those beeps, long before we managed to decode them, it's not like something has been calling me. I need to figure out what it is tomorrow. I'm going to undertake a dangerous mission, so I'm ready to doubt my thoughts, just in case. First, I need to come clean about something. In my report to the I mentioned that new gravestones occasionally appear, but we don't know why. The truth is, I have a pretty good idea about why one of them appeared. It was after a mission during which I lost a dude. After several sleepless nights, Pouring over the transmission and watching the lighthouse in my binoculars, I decided it was time to explore its interior. I had to leave some team members behind. So I took Joshua and Lucy with me. The fog was thick. We got separated. I heard, I heard Joshua des desperate cries for help, but by then it was too late. Through the haze, I I saw the light pierce the fog, and I could only watch in horror <laughs> as Joshua's body began to melt. His flesh dripping from his bones. His, his empty eye socket seemed to plead with me to save him. <clears throat> Finally, Lucy's urgent tug on my arm snapped me back to my senses. I have to stop. And recording. <laughs>